Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at the Monoprice Cadet 3D printer. So this is quite a unique printer in that it has a very small size and it's geared more towards the beginner as it's supposed to be very simplistic to use and that anyone can get started with 3D printing. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. Alright guys, so I do have a little bit of a soft spot for Monoprice because my first 3D printer was a Monoprice Mini and this is how I actually got into 3D printing. So I do like what Monoprice offers and you know a lot of their stuff is on the budget side and some of their stuff is really high end like the Delta Pro that I reviewed not too long ago. So let's take a closer look at this thing. So we got a pretty small box. There's our carton dimensions, which is 11, 11 by 16, and that is the box. So it's not a very large box. It's quite small, actually. And it's only 3 kilograms, which is 6.6 .6 pounds. So as far as shipping is concerned, it's, you know, quite a small box to ship. And we do have a modern price logo here. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. So it does look like we have a box in a box. And we do, and the retail box inside of it actually looks very, very nice. So we have a picture here that says Cadet, the first mission to discovery. So yeah, this definitely is, you know, aiming towards the beginner here. Quite exciting when you open it and see this box. So here we have some capabilities, print via Wi-Fi, full auto leveling, set up and print in 30 seconds. Definitely love the idea that it has full auto leveling. All right, so a very nice box. It looks like we have a tab up here. Go ahead, open it up. Very nicely presented. So right off the bat, we see quite a few things here. Sticker that says stop. Read this before you unpack your printer. The next thing we see is some stickers, different types of cadet stickers. I know some kids out there that are getting into 3D printer definitely appreciate this. All right, so let's keep going. So far, very impressed with the packaging. So here we have a box and there's a little sticker here, everything that's included. So we're gonna open this up and take a closer look at all the accessories in here. All right, and so it looks like we have the printer next. So we have nice foam padding inside. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out. And that appears to be everything for the box. All right, guys, and so here is the printer in all its glory, and I am quite impressed with the size of it. I really, really like it. So there's not very many printers out there that are small that have a quality build to them. So I'm hoping this is going to be one of them. So here we have a warning sticker about this bag, I guess. Let's go ahead and pull this off. All right, and this is what we see. This is actually a very, very nice little printer. So we have a white finish and everything is made out of plastic. Looks like some kind of hard plastic. And then we have gray accent on the top and the bottom. So we don't really have any kind of real feet on this thing. It's just kind of sitting on the edge of the plastic here. And underneath we can see two stepper motors. We have the Y axis motor and the Z axis motor here. We do have the Modern Price logo up front. And on one of the sides, we can see where we have the extruder feeder. And this is where your filament will go in. And then next to that, we have the spool holder. And it's quite small, as you guys can see. It will not fit a normal size spool. So, you know, you could extend this. But I would think having something external would make more sense for this. So on the back of the printer, we can see there's quite a large opening and we can see all the workings. So this printer actually has pretty nice looking stepper motors on every axis and on the extruder. So this is a quite a familiar setup, but everything miniaturized. And this side over here is quite clean and we just have a power input and then the USB connection. Now, if we look on the top of the printer, we can see we have a little sticker here to scan for the manual. It looks like we have a little slot for the micro SD card, a little reset button, a display and a rotary knob. And also we have a slit here on the top and that is for the Bowden tube. The Bowden tube will come out of here just like that and then it'll connect to the extruder mechanism. And so what you're gonna do is just simply plug it in there and it should lock into this coupler. 
All right, well, this is quite exciting, and I definitely see how somebody would be excited about this, especially if you're getting started with 3D printing. This is quite an intriguing printer. All right, so let's take a closer look what we have here in the box. So we do have a list here of all that's inside. It's quite a long list, but we'll go ahead and open it and check it out. All right, so first things first is we do get a little manual here. So it is quite basic, and it kind of gives you a quick overview of how to get started. And then kind of shows you how to use the printer. So we also get a little thank you card from Mono Price. And if you do have any issues, you can contact them here. It looks like we have a baggie of tools and looks like our SD card is also in there. Also, you get a cable and it's actually quite long. Looks like to be about three and a half to four feet long. So if you didn't want to use the SD card, you could connect the printer straight to the computer with this cable and print like that. All right, and it looks like we do get a little sample of white PLA filament. So this is to get started to print your first model. But just keep in mind that you want to go ahead and buy some filament for yourself because you're definitely going to need it if you're going to be printing anything reasonable. And also to help our print stick, we get a little glue stick here. And because this printer doesn't have a heated bed, you have to use a little bit of glue to keep the filament stuck to the bed. Here we have, looks like extra stickers. And I think these are printing surfaces. I'm not sure that's what it kind of looks like but it's kind of like tape. And I think this is made so your print can stick on here a lot easier. So you get two of these. And so for the last item, we have this little box. And in the box, we have the power supply to the printer. So we get the US power cord that'll plug into the brick. And then the other end from the brick goes to the printer and it actually has an on and off switch. So your power switch is on the cord. All right, and that's everything that this box had. So for the next part, what we need to do is we need to take out all these things inside the printer. So I don't know, it might be a little bit hard to see, but we got quite a few things going on in there. So on the back here, we have some foam. Looks like it just comes right off. And there are some black clips down in there that need to come out. One of them already fell out. So these are just holding the bed so it doesn't move around. So after we remove the two black clips, we can go ahead and run the Z axis up. And how you're gonna do that is you're gonna just spin this coupler. It'll raise it and get it out of the way. We can go ahead and move the bed and get these foam pieces out in the front. So on the inside, we can see here that we have our build plate and the little sticker that we saw earlier, that's what's on here and this one's a little scratched. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it because it'll be fine. So if we look a little closer, you guys can see that the bed rides on these rails here. And we do have a caution sticker that says, hazardous moving parts, keep your fingers away. But overall, this printer feels really nice. So back here, we can see that we have a Y end stop switch. And basically there's three of those for every axis. So whenever an axis like the bed would be the Y axis, once it hits that switch, it clicks it and that's where it knows its position and where you know to start. So the home position would be, you know, with these switches clicked. Same thing for the Z axis going up and the X axis, which is kind of hard to see on this printer because we have this guard here for safety reasons. But the X axis is right there and it moves back and forth. And it also has an end stop switch over there. So it's kind of hard to see guys, but we do have an auto leveling sensor right there. It looks like an optical one and it goes down. So it senses the bottom of the bed and that's how it calibrates how far to be off between the nozzle and the bed. And there underneath you guys can see the print nozzle and that's where the filament will come out. So one of the hardest things for anyone that's getting started in 3D printing is usually leveling the bed. And because the way this thing has auto level built in, this alleviates that problem. And one of the reasons why this printer orientated more towards the beginner because you don't have to figure out how to, you know, level this thing at all. So the whole point of a printer like this is that you can buy it, unbox it, and start printing. There's no real assembly required or anything else. Now that doesn't mean that you don't you know, need to learn how this thing works because the more you know, the easier you can understand. All right guys, so we've got this thing unboxed. We took a little closer look at it. So for the next part, let's go ahead and plug it in, turn it on, check out the user interface and some of the options, insert our filament, and start the first print. All right, so I got the wall adapter plugged in and we do have a little light here. So let's go ahead and plug the other end into the printer. So remember that the power switch is here on the cable. And this is how you're gonna power on and off the printer. So let's go ahead and hit the power button. And when we do that, we should be able to see some information here on the display. So it looks like it fired up. We have the Monoprice logo and there we go. So here we can see it says welcome. I'll click next. 
I like how this knob glows, very nice. It looks like it comes programmed with getting you started with setting up the filament. That's pretty cool. So step one, it says here, let's load the filament. Click next. So it's going to heat the nozzle and that's what we're waiting for. So here we have the temperature of the nozzle right now and where it's going to 210. As that's heating, let's go ahead and open up this bag of filament. So we're going to find the one of the ends and I guess it's going to sit in here. To put in the filament is quite simple. You have a little lever here with a spring and you can compress that. And there's a little hole underneath here where the filament feeds through. And then you can compress this and push it through a little farther. So what you want to do is you want to get it into the teeth. And I think the rest will be automated from there. So here we can see we're almost up to temperature. And that didn't take too long. So it's peeping now. It says insert the filament and press the button. So let's go ahead and do that. And we inserted it. Okay, so now it's actually pulling it through. And you guys can see that wheel spinning. And that's the filament getting pushed through the tube down into the hot end there. And it should come out the tip at the bottom. So this is just a pointer. If you don't want to use the automated system, you can just compress this and then push the filament through yourself all the way down. That would be much quicker. All right, and we should start coming out shortly here. And there it goes. You guys can see that it is purging away. So that should be good enough. And it, I think, yeah, there it goes. So it actually stopped on its own. So when you first power on the printer, it will take you through the auto feeding and you want to start it from here because, you know, if you push it down more, you would be extruding a lot more. Here we have a couple options. We can continue or we can purge more. So obviously we don't need to purge more. So for the next part, it's asking us to insert the SD card in here. So our SD card came in this little baggie of tools. See what we have in here. So we have the adapter that reads the SD card to USB. So you can bring it into your computer. The SD card itself, which is an 8 gig. Then we'll have some tools here, a little wrench, a few Allen wrenches, a Phillips screwdriver, and it looks like an extra 0.4 nozzle. That's nice that it comes with that. So let's go ahead and grab our SD card, and we're going to insert it into here. All right, so we did that step. Let's click Next. Now we can choose Print from SD card. And here are some of the things that we got we can print that's on the SD card. So these are test files that come with the printer. So I guess let's go with the first one that says ear ring G code. So that's the file name and that's the code that's required for this printer to understand what it's printing. When you slice your own prints, you're going to be making G code. All right, so let's choose that. And before we print, it gives us a few more options here. We can start the print or we can check out some of these other options. And it looks like we have all the information about how this print will be printing. And it doesn't appear to be that we can change anything because if I click on this density, it doesn't do anything. So it just kind of gives you information of what's, you know, what's about to print. So it looks like it's only going to take nine minutes. It's going to be 200 degrees about two grams of filament and the infill i guess that's what that is the density is 10 percent and that's the layer height which is a 0.2 that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and push print and there we go so the printer has started so what it's doing now is it's homing it's going all the way up on the z-axis then on the x-axis and then on the y-axis and now it's going to start printing so hopefully it'll go down to exactly where it needs to be Okay, so it looks like right now it is probing the bed with the leveling sensor. That's that little orange cap that you see. And there it goes. Okay, so it looks like it's purging maybe. And now it started the print. So according to what I can see, it looks like it is perfectly distance between the nozzle and the bed. So yeah, the auto leveling is definitely doing its job. And so you don't have to worry about that. And if you're getting started, this is definitely a huge plus here because, you know, one of the biggest problems in 3D printing or getting started with 3D printing is leveling the bed. And whenever a machine can do it itself, it makes it that much easier to enjoy the 3D printer. All right, so it looks like it's building a raft. And then after that, it's going to be printing our item. But yeah, it looks like we have success and everything looks good. Now, if you guys noticed, I did put the filament down. And the reason for that is because when it's over here, it's it's getting all tangled because it's not on a spool or on a roll. And so if it gets tangled, it's kind of, you know, gets pinched and kinked. And with these kind of samples here, I like to kind of spread it out more. That way, you know, it kind of feeds more evenly into the extruder. But yeah, it looks like the print itself is on a roll and everything is good. So I guess we're just going to let it print here and uh, we'll see what happens. So let's 
let's check out real quick what our UI says here. So here we have the temperature of the nozzle, and it's our printer name. That's our fan there, and it's at 100%. And then here we have the axes and where they're at. And the most important one here is the Z axis, because this is how far up it is off the bed right now. So it's printed 1.12 millimeters so far. Uh, I guess it's 1.6 now. So here we have the speed of the printer, it's at 100%. And you can control that by turning this knob. And as you guys can see, when I turn it, it goes down. So this will slow it down, the speed of how fast that's printing. So let's go ahead and put that back to 100. And next to that, we have the progress. So this is how much time passed since it started, so five minutes. And this is the progress bar of when it's finished. So when this fills up, the print will be done. And here we have more information. Probably means maybe from the USB source, but in any case. But that has nothing to do with our print. So if you click this knob here, you go into another menu, and here you can actually do a few more other things. You can tune the machine as it's printing, so you can adjust the speed, the nozzle temperature, fan speed, the flow rate, and so much filament comes out, and the Z offsetting. So if your nozzle is too close or too high, you can actually click on this and go up and down literally as it's printing. So this could be useful. Now if we go back, we have here the main options, which is to pause the print and then save printing and off. I'm not sure exactly what that means. And then we have stop print. So if you want to cancel the print completely, you can stop it. Or if you want to pause it for whatever reason, you can do that. And I'm thinking this is maybe if you want to save it and then print later. I'm not sure though. In any case, so we do have some options there to control the printer. All right, and so the printer is boogieing away and everything looks fine. And believe it or not guys, we already have 9 minutes passed and we're getting close to being done. So, looks like our first test print is going to be quite successful. Alright, so it's finished and it's going up. And we can see our print. Okay, and so it looks like it presents it to the front. Very nice. Now here's something interesting. We didn't use the glue stick. The reason we didn't is because I know from experience this paper style kind of stickers here, they stick quite well. But if you do have issues with sticking, you might want to, you know, use some glue. But I prefer not using the glue if not necessary. If you're having trouble of sticking, you might want to use the glue. So let's go ahead and see how easy this thing pops off. And as you guys saw, it was actually stuck pretty well, but it did pop off quite easy also. Now we do have a raft here, so the print itself doesn't print to the bed. So let's go ahead and pop the raft off. And that comes off quite easy actually. And you guys can see we have our first print, which is a cat ring. And if we look at the side of it, we can see the layers are sitting very, very nice. So it looks like the layer bonding is very good and I can't really see any kind of defects on it. So, so far, very promising. I guess I could try this ring on my pinky, but you guys can see here, you can print pretty much anything. So this is our first test file. So, so let's go ahead and try another file. And the way you access that is you just click this knob while the printer's on, and it's gonna give you a few choices here. You can go to print from SD card. So when you click that, you're gonna see the files on the SD card. So we printed the ear ring. I guess let's go ahead and try the fortune cat next. I'm going to click on that and here we can see all the info about it. So it's going to take 2 hours and 8 minutes and it's going to take 17 grams of filament. I'm not sure if that's enough of this filament that was provided. Let's click on quit and go back and check out this dragon here, if it's smaller or not. Okay, so this one is 14 grams. It's a bit smaller and we got 1 hour and 36. So let's, let's just go with the dragon just to make sure we have enough filament. I'm going to click the print. So there we go, it started. So the printer is homing, so it's moving around. But before the printer can do anything, it has to find a starting point, which is the home. And it looks like it actually measures the bed. And there it goes. So every time it starts to print, it checks the level, I guess. And so now, you can go ahead and preheat to its temperature, which is 215. So once it gets there, it's gonna start printing. All right, so it started the print. So it is building a raft, just like the first time, and the leveling looks perfect. This is a definitely a huge advantage when you don't have to worry about leveling. All right, so we're just gonna let it be and uh, we'll see what kind of print comes out. All right, so our second print is done and it took one hour and 40 minutes. That's not too bad. And also guys, I haven't even mentioned one of the most important parts about this printer, which is the magnetic removable bed. What you're able to do is just pick it right off the plate and you can see that this is a metal plate and we have a magnetic pad here that sticks to it and this pad is actually made of a couple layers it's got the magnet part and then it's got the build plate right there and then we have the sticker on top of that so 
So yeah, super cool that it has this. And one of the great things about it is that whenever you got a print, especially if you're gonna you know, fill up the bed, you know, when it's time to take it off, it's a lot easier because you can flex this. So when you flex it, the print just pops right off, even easier. So this is a really nice feature to have. And it goes back on just like that, and it's quite sturdy, it doesn't move around. When it's time to go up, it goes up quite easy, but side to side, it sticks really well. So it looks like our little print here turned out very nice. So as far as I can tell, guys, the accuracy of the print is very good, and the way the layers are set together, looking really good. I'm actually quite impressed with it. So I guess this is the little dragon, and it also has a raft, so that should come right off quite easily. And it does. And there you guys can see the bottom of it. So very cool so far. I'm really liking this printer, and the print quality is above average, I would say for sure. Quite impressive, if anything. So we do have one more print we can print, but I want to go ahead and change the filament. And you guys can see how much we have left, so I guess we could have printed that other file that was longer. But I want to change it to another color since we got two white prints so far. But in order to pull out the old filament, we have to preheat the hot end because right now it's not going to come out because it's melted inside the hot end. So we need to click on the knob and then go to prepare. And it looks like we have outer retract filament, but this is going to take too long. Because it's going to preheat and then it's going to slowly, you know, spit the filament out. Kind of like when it was putting it in. But that takes a while and I don't want to wait for it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to preheat it ourselves. And so we're going to go to control. And then hit temperature. And then the nozzle we're going to go to like 200. And you guys can see that we are heating up. Alright, so we're over 180 now. So we can go ahead and just pull it out. It comes right out. And you guys can see where it was inside the hot end and it had the melt in order for it to come out. And the filament that I want to use is this silver here, or the silky silver. And it is a one kilogram spool, so it's a large spool, so I'm not able to put it on here, obviously. It's way too small for that. So these are normal skateboard bearings, and this was 3D printed. And if I have a link for that, I'll leave it in the description where you can print it out if you wanted to make something like this. But there's different kind of spools you can make, or spool holders. And so this just spins kind of like on bearing, so that's why I like it. It's pretty smooth. Any kind of spool holder will work, even a friction kind. So, so we're gonna grab our new filament and stick it in the extruder. And I'm gonna go ahead and run it all the way through and it's gonna come out the hot end. And since the hot end is hot now, as I push it through, it should start oozing out. And there it goes. So now we got some silver coming out. I'm go ahead and grab that. I'm going to put this spool here a little closer to the machine so it feeds right into there. And so now we're ready to print our next print, which I'll go to print from SD card. And I'll go to the Fortune Cat, and it's going to take about two hours to print that. So I'm going to push print, and because the nozzle is hot enough, it should start quite quick. Okay, so it's doing its leveling, and you guys can see maybe the light in there on the leveler. So yeah, we can see it's printing a raft again, and uh, yeah, it's going to put the print on top of the raft. And I'm going to bring the microphone closer to the printer so you guys can hear how loud it is. So it's not very loud, but it definitely you know, has a noise. It's got some fan noise, and you can definitely hear the motors working. So about a typical sound that you would hear off a normal 3D printer. All right, so the print is done and it looks like it turned out very nice. A lot better than I actually was expecting it to. So this is a test file that came with the printer. Let's go ahead and use the magnetic bed. Wow, guys, I'm really blown away by this cat. That's a very, very nice print. Look how the layers are sitting. And so this is a 0.2 millimeter height. Now look at the back. Wow. Well, wow, this printer is actually a lot more accurate in putting down layers than I thought it would be. Very nice. So it looks like Monoprice got this thing really tuned in here. But these are test files, so we still have to slice our own files and see how that will look like. I'm kind of excited to see that. Let's go ahead and pull this guy off the plate. And you guys can see that this sticker is not really getting worn out or anything. It's actually surviving very nicely. And the prints are all sticking very well. So overall, I'm really happy with how this printer is performing so far. Let's take this raft off of it. It just pops right off. So it's not perfect underneath. You can see a little bit here when it was doing the bottom. It, I guess, wasn't close enough to the raft. But wow, guys, this is a very nice print. Very impressed with it.
So I can't wait to see what our own prints look like. So let's head to the computer and we'll go over really quick of how to slice a file for this printer. All right, so we are at the computer here and I have the micro SD card installed. So let's go ahead and open it up. And this is what we find. So we do have quite a few files in here. We actually have a manual a full manual so you probably want to go ahead and read this to familiarize yourself with all the functions and you know how to operate the printer you got a nice little picture here of telling you what everything is so we also have the quick start guide here and we also have some programs and the test files that we've actually printed the three files but what we're after here is the slicer so if you're using windows you could try the Wii builder here but since i'm on mac i'm going to do the cura and i prefer using cura anyways because i'm more familiar with it but in any case we're going to go ahead and install the program and installing it on a mac is quite easy you just drag it over so once it downloads we can go ahead and launch it and this is what it looks like when you get started so we're going to agree to the user terms so it's going to get to add printer what you're going to do is go to here to the non-network printers and you click on that and as you can see that monoprice has their own settings already set up for you so you don't have to do anything so we have the mp cadet i'm going to click next and finish and so now we're set up to slice just like that so if you want to learn how to use cura really good videos out there but i'll just go over the basics so let's drag a model into here so we're going to go with the benchy just going to put it in there and it pops right up and so if you select it we can use these functions here which is to move the benchy around and just grab something and move it or you can do it manually here you can scale it here so we can make it smaller and bigger go back to 100 percent here we can rotate it in any direction and there's a few other options here that you can play around with so the most important part is right over here in this corner if we click on that you guys can see what they have it set up as so if we click on custom we can make our own little profile here so we'll call it normal and here's all the things you can adjust so if you're kind of confused about this you can just print with what they got but we're going to adjust some of this stuff just a little bit we're going to make the layer height 1.6 we're going to make the wall count at three because we want you know better walls and we're going to make the top layer six instead of five sometimes five is just not enough to cover the top especially if there's concaves and things like that six seems to work out great for me and fills at 10 percent i usually like this at 15 to 20 so let's just make bump it up to 15. that's how much material goes inside so here we have the printing temperatures 210 just great print speed 60 is a little bit too quick for me i like 50. z hop you probably don't want to enable that supports we definitely don't want supports on the benchy build plate adhesion and i like to put this on skirt and that's just going to make a few lines around and then we have a dual extruder which we don't need that option at all so that's pretty much it now you can go to more advanced and expert settings like if we go to advanced we're going to get a lot more options so usually i like advanced options because i kind of know exactly what i want here we have retraction distance and i like to bump this up to a little more like six millimeters and the speed down to 25. so here we can see that we can adjust the speed a little bit more precisely so this all looks good but i think the rest of it's fine honestly so once you got all these settings figured out you know you're going to click the slice button here and it's going to slice the model and this is what's producing the g-code that you need to print so the printer will understand what it's printing so now we have an option here to preview or save the file and if you click on this you can save it to the computer if you click here and if it knows that there's you know an sd card like we have now it'll save it straight to that but well, let's go ahead and click the preview button and so on the preview you can kind of look at all your layers and how they're going to be printing and if you push the play here it'll play out layer 33 uh, in any case so you can here you can kind of preview what's going to happen and you can see how our skirt is printed around on our first layer there and the reason i like that is because it kind of purges the nozzle and gets it ready and so when it starts actually printing it gets a nice clean print all right so let's go ahead and save the file to our micro sd card so it's going to save it and then we can inject it straight from here so yeah guys so this is just a quick overview of how to slice something and it's not too hard if you play around a little bit you'll figure it out quite quick All right, now we've started. So let's hope it turns out just as good. And so far, what I can tell, the Benchy is looking really nice. So as you saw there, guys, it's not too hard to slice your own models. 
All right, and the benchy is finished, and it took exactly two hours and three minutes. So that was actually quite a quick print. So this thing is definitely optimized to print fast. Pull it out and take a closer look. So looking at it right off the bat, it looks very, very impressive. <laughs> um, the layers are sitting excellent. I'm actually very impressed with this thing. And I've seen a lot of prints, guys. I've seen a lot of benchies printed. And this is the kind of filament that really shows too, since it's, you know, shiny. Wow, that's a very, very good print. Let's go ahead and pop this benchy off. Let's see how easy it comes off. So we might have been a little bit too close to the bed. Just trying to pull up the tape here. Yeah, we were a bit close. But even still, we took the benchy off and our bed is still fine. And we haven't used any glue at all, which is really good because when you start using glue, you get a little messy. So yeah, I would say this thing is definitely doing a great job in printing. And this Benji here proves that it can be a really nice printer. So I'm really happy with that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and print quite a few other things and then we'll take a closer look at all the models. All right guys, so we printed quite a few things as you can see here and I'm really intrigued by this little printer. It's really fun to use and it works flawlessly. So after printing the models that was included, and then the benchy, I printed also in the silver this calibration cube and it turned out really well also. And so here on the Y axis we can kind of see the vibrations are very low so there's no ghosting almost at all. And the X is very nice also. And here are the flat walls. Very nice print. And the top also is great. So this thing is really putting the filament down nicely. So after that I printed this bolt here, pink PLA. It's kind of like a soft pink. Turned out really well also. And by the way, all my files that I sliced are 0.16 layer height. So, but I feel like it gives a much better result, especially on the tapered prints. So this turned out really good also. So after the bolt, I wanted to print something that had a function to it. And I like to print this bearing here. And this obviously prints as one print. So here we have the bottom. And what was amazing is that this thing broke loose just by spinning it. And it's so tight in there. The tolerances ended up being perfect. Like, I'm really surprised. This might be one of the tightest ones ever that I've ever printed. It doesn't even spin like super long because the tolerances are so close. Almost nothing's moving in there, very little. So very good. If it can print this bearing, that tells me, you know, we can print some functional parts and that is great. So after that, I printed this Matter Hackers Astronaut and this turned out very, very well also. And the height of this astronaut is actually 98 millimeters. So this is almost the full potential of this printer. So you can kind of get an idea how tall you can print here. But yeah, if we look at the layers, like especially on his helmet here, as the other ones there are very nice. And even our overhangs here is quite reasonable also. So an excellent print again from this cadet printer. All right, and the other two prints I made are in gold, and one of them here is this a lizard looking thing, and this is a very, very hard print to print, especially in this size. The bigger it is, the easier it is, but it has all these holes here that it has to make retractions. So it's not perfect, obviously, but it did extremely well because this is something very, very hard to do. I can tell you right now that this printer will not disappoint in print quality. And this did take about five hours to print because of all the retractions. So the last thing we have is this vase in here that you can barely see. And this vase is actually 99 millimeters tall. So it's literally at the max. There's only one millimeter left. Not sure if it could go all the way to 100, probably maybe a little over, most likely. It does look like you can print maximum without an issue. So the vase is still on the build plate. And this is printed in a mode called spiralize. So this is just one layer all the way around. Well, there's a few layers on the very bottom, but then it's one layer all the way up. So it is in the settings of Cure. So if you look for it, look for spiralize. Because it's one layer, you can really see how nice the layers sit. And again, this printer did an excellent job of putting the layers down. Like I'm truly impressed with this thing. So let's go ahead and take it off. And something like this is quite fragile, so it's nice to have this bed here. Well, I do remember I put some glue on here and unfortunately I think I broke the vase. And this is what happens when you're too hasty. Yeah, 
I guess too much glue and it stuck too well. Oh, I remember why I used the glue because this astronaut needed the glue because it has a very small surface that it holds to. And you know, that could easily pop off. So I had to use glue on that. And it translated to this and unfortunately we broke it. But in any case, so overall guys, I'm pretty impressed with this printer. Yeah, it's kind of a small build volume, but you know, for somebody that's getting started or maybe you have a child that is interested in 3D printing, this is what this printer is for. Or even this printer would be great for education purposes, like teaching 3D printing and letting, you know, students get hands-on with printers. So this printer really delivers on the functionality and the ease of use. So for everything this printer is meant to be, I think it's a great value. I think Monoprice did an excellent job of constructing a printer that is this size. Even though this thing is small, it, it's still very advanced advance and how it's built and how it operates. It has all the stepper motors running on belts. It even has a full-size lead screw. You know, got everything that a normal printer would have, except for the heated bed, but that's really not necessary for smaller prints like this. And I think the market for this printer would be for someone that's getting started and is curious or even a gift for someone that's interested in printers. So overall, I'd give it a huge thumbs up. You will need to figure out how you want to do the spool holder, but that's not too hard to do. There's plenty of options out there. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video of the monoprice cadet and if you're interested in this printer i'm going to have some links in the description so check that out and if you enjoy videos like this i do a lot of 3d printing reviews and other things on this channel and there's a lot more to come so if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and as always thanks for watching the videos and i'll see you on the next one peace